but um, I don't know. I've never heard of this drink before, and I mean, I feel like I'd know my favorite. Actually, I feel like I would be the one to know about it because I was telling Rick the other day, my um, I like YouTube a lot. Like I like YouTube sh- uh, shorts, I guess. I don't use yeah, TikTok yeah. or anything. And my whole algorithm is like alcohol. I don't know why. It's like people making cocktails, testing bourbon, stuff like stuff like that. Um, I feel like I would have seen somebody making a, a, a shaft. A shaft. Never, never, never seen it, never heard of it in my life. Here's a question. Uh, Nanaimo bars, would you consider those a Western thing or a Canadian thing at this point? I think it's Canadian. You that's know the, not Western. That's a that's a Canadian yeah. thing. You know what they remind me? You know what, whenever I hear Nanaimo bar, what I think of? The Mandarin. Really? I don't I know why. Camp. That's the first place I ever had one when I was a kid. You know what the, the Mandarin, the buffet? I don't, they, I don't know if they have them out West here. but It might be an Eastern thing. The, yeah, Mandarin's like a like a basically a big Chinese uh, Chinese Asian buffet. Um, I know for sure they're across Ontario. I don't know where else. Um, and it was like uh, they kind of get up to the '90s. Let's call it 2000s. I mean, it's not good quality food, but it's good. It's got a good variety. It's better than that typical corner store like sketchy Chinese food the place. The best, the best and way to describe that's the first place I had an animal. The best bars. way to describe is that meme where it's like, "What's one place you thought was really fancy when you were a kid, and then you grew up and realized it's not fancy at all?" Mm. And that's the Mandarin. Because you go there, they take your picture. You got you go home with like a picture in a frame. It's got a cool Mag- pond. Yeah, you mag you put it on the magnet on the fridge. Like it, lo- it feels fancy when you're there. They got yeah, the koi pond. Each room has like an, a big aquarium. You're like, look at all the fish. Next thing you know, like it's not good food. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very. Um, but the, the question about the Nanaimo, Nanaimo bars, there's a place in BC, in BC called Nanaimo. Yeah, right? so they're from, they were originally, uh, I'm going to get this wrong, I'm sure. <laughs> but, um, but I'm pretty sure they're from Nanaimo originally. Okay. It was probably some, you know, woman who was brilliant in the kitchen and then, yeah, you know, all her friends were just like, what the heck is that? Sort of yeah. Thing. Could be completely wrong. Uh, <laughs> I would, like, I mean, but I, I know it's like from BC. Yeah, I feel like they'd be from here because yeah. it's in that place called Nanaimo. Yeah. Um, when well, we were wait, flying. Hold on. on that note, we should say for the people who don't know, watching at home or, or listening, the pals are currently in BC, just outside of Kamloops, in the wonderful Sun Peaks. So thank you guys for for having us, yep. and we're we're joined here with Ellie, and uh, we're excited to to chat more about your career and obviously skiing and everything. But uh, big thank you to Sun Peaks for hosting us. This is amazing. Our first pals podcast trip. Yeah, it is super sure. exciting. So yeah. But back to what you were saying. Sorry. Back, a little, little short interrupt. Like, yeah. That's like, uh, this is brought to you by. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Smooth transition, Rick. Um, you know what? Honestly, all things considered, like we've been so chaotic in this episode already. So that felt appropriate. That was, <laughs> yeah. like, a, that was like an inorganic, just get it in there, shoehorn it in. Um, at least save the podcast by getting the laptop here because we, uh, otherwise we would have not had a podcast. So thank, thank you, you, 2014 Ellie. MacBook. Yeah, honestly. Honestly, the Mac, Mac really gets you. They're like, Makes your life so hard. These old ones are the best ones, and like it, ha- it's all the same. Like mine looks the exact same, same application, same everything. But they took away the USB. I don't, I don't understand. So I haven't given it up yet. I you gotta don't. knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> uh, but to, to go back, then uh, <clears throat> we're talking about Nanaimo bars. I saw them actually when we flew into Vancouver. We just had a quick like one hour layover and we went into the, to the lounge, the Maple Leaf Lounge there, uh, and they had Nanaimo bars. Like yeah. I've never seen that in an airport lounge before. That is very specific. So I'm assuming I, they must be obviously from out here. Yeah, if you go down to Vertical Cafe, they'll have them there as well. They've got some really good ones. But I, I think I didn't realize that they were really a Canadian thing until I was in the U.S. for quite a bit. And then, yeah. um, you know, I was like, oh, man, I really would like a Nanaimo bar. And people were like, <laughs> what the heck are you talking about? And uh, anyway, I've had a couple experiences with like that with food. What's a BC thing that you think of? Like what, what reminds you of home when you're away? Whew. Are question. we still talking food or just anything, anything in general? Anything, anything. Mountains? The mountains that we have here are just like ridiculous. So, but down there, you guys have mountains as well, no? Yeah, um, but they, uh, I feel like every range has its own kind of unique. F- I'm gonna say flavor, for lack of a better term. Like, you know, when you're in BC, you know, when you're in California, you know, when you're in Colorado. Like, they all have their own feel. Yeah, so I think the fair. mountains, to me, BC is mountains. That's fair. It's cool out here. I'm, I'm honestly a big fan. Like, I've. I was out in BC in May for work and which uh, in Vancouver and like you can kind of see the mountains and you know I have like some friends out here and they always said you know you can go skiing in the day and then down surfing and uh yeah or ski in the morning surf in the afternoon whatever they said like basically the different climates and all see that. See the sky. Yeah, that's the that's the better way to put it. Uh and I thought that was so cool cuz you know Toronto you can basically you can only ski in the winter and that you can't go swimming in the winter and all that stuff. 
And then when I came to Vancouver, I like I, I kind of noticed it. I'm like, it's kind of balmy, but you can kind of see snow. It's pretty cool. You can see the snow line. Yeah. And then now that we're here, I had no idea that like you go to the top of the mountain and it feels kind of cool. But then you come down and you're sweating by the time you're at the bottom of the run. And like it's balmy. It's a little rainy. It's the weirdest weather. Like I did. It's, it's record, not what you think is, of when you. This is weird weather. Okay. <laughs> no, Growing the, up here, it was like, I don't think it ever was above zero degrees. Really? In, I mean, maybe like one or two days and we would complain about it, but like it's been. So this right now, you're saying like being around like the one degree, like, you know, the heck was that? Somebody's turned on. Uh, going from like, you know, minus two to plus two, kind of that range, let's say like, it's not, it's not normal. Uh, I would say it's getting more normal, but okay. I don't remember that as like a kid. Okay. The I best think, part is that when you, you can tell where you are on the mountain based on how much snow is on the trees right now. Yeah. Like at the base of the mountain, there's very little snow on the tree. You get to like the midway point. It's like, okay, you're, it's half tree, half snow. The top, it's all white. Yeah. And like, you can literally just tell, okay, hmm, we're probably at the midway point right now, give or take. We're near the bottom. Start heading left. We've got to get back to Sundance or yep. whatever. Yep. Starburst. Sunburst. 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 <laughs> Starburst. Starburst. Starburst could work too. Um, yeah, no, it's really cool. I think one of the best things about when you like have that elevation change is like at the top of the mountain, you get snow ghosts, which for anybody who is not familiar with what those are, basically the trees get so covered in snow that they just look like big fluffy marshmallow looking things. And it's And what, what are they called? Snow ghosts? Snow ghosts. Okay. Yeah. And you can, yeah, I mean, there's some, look them up. They're, they're pretty. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it's spooky. We were up there today or the last two days because the fog was so heavy. Um, when we got to, we took, uh, what lift did we take? We took sun, sunburst up to, top what's the one that top of the mountain? That crystal. Goes up. Crystal, yeah. And you're getting up there and like you can't see anything. And if you didn't have, if you didn't see the tower that holds the chairlift up, your, uh, your depth perception was non-existent. Like you had zero visibility up there. Also, we'll say viz, which is pretty cool. Uh, but like low vis. Yeah. yeah. Jenny, like, Jenny, Jenny had the low lingo. Vis yeah. Jenny had the lingo going. Yeah. Like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but when you were up there, like you could not see anything. But then you could see kind of through these big clusters of like those snow ghosts, and it's really eerie with the with the like just can't see anything but those and these big tall like pine trees that are like bending because there's so much snow on them. It's it, like it's equal parts cool, but kind of like there can be some really treacherous cool. looking the like the photography that you can get um depending on what the lighting looks like up there is can be pretty uh yeah. both stunning but also can be creepy <laughs> yeah but in a good way in yeah. a good way it, literally there's one point where on the chairlift i'm like i feel like this is the chair lift to heaven like, it's just like nothingness is all you see yeah and, like you look down you're like i can't see the ground i just see fog i look forward i can see the chair lift in front of me that's it and then, like you look to the left i know there's trees you look to the right i know there's trees but you literally can't see anything amazing yeah i have a question because obviously um grown up around here like you it's the second biggest um rain mountain in By north area. america or canada north america uh, canada. canada i think do you ha do you feel like in your time living up here you've you've done every single run on the mountain you know what i can no longer say that because they have developed so much more of the mountain Okay. in the past 10 years but when i was a kid i hit i yeah yeah you were absolutely. just going after like every oh, run yeah. i had an older brother and his favorite thing was follow me and i would go okay and so <laughs> i just would do anything on this mountain and and we we were up here so often that there was just nothing that we didn't do that's cool um, what was your favorite i really like this run called sting it's a it's like a very consistent pitch so you can just rip it like if it's groomed you can just you can just lay it over and just rip it the whole way down. And you can just really feel like uh, maybe alternatively flying, but also like get your like fear quota for the day, depending on how, how, yeah. how hard you go. We literally, we got out there this morning and some of the, um, the trails we went on were like just freshly groomed. Yeah. You literally feel like you're kind of just gliding along the top of the snow. Like you're not even like actually carving into it. You're just, I don't even know how to, you're, 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 it feels like you're skating. You're gliding kind of floating, on top. Yeah. 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 And when you start going really fast, you get that little bit like, I know we don't get, we don't get any air time. Like me and George aren't fast enough to, to really get any air. <laughs> <laughs> George is just about to say, speak for yourself. I was going to say, show him the video of me. <laughs> I got a video of George. It's like, it looks like he's jumping. It's, I think he's getting like six sorry, inches of air. Guys, did there. you get that clip? <laughs> I got I'll tell you a funny story. After. But um, no, it's like you literally feel like you're just gliding on top of the mountain. It's like such a cool feeling. Like, being from Ontario, we don't get this. Like, our biggest mountains, half the size of this, and 
it's just so crowded that whenever you pick up speed to you're always like hey watch out for this kid watch out for that parent <laughs> that is i would say that you like the one thing that you picked up on there is that there's nobody here i mean yeah. there's people here but the mountain the is amount of so space, big yeah. that you can just like you'll be in the middle of a run and you'll look up and you look down, you'll see nobody. Yeah. And so that just allows you to have so much more freedom in what you can do on the run. You can really let loose as far as like being able to, um, just take it at whatever speed you want to. I was here last week. We were doing some filming for a, a ski magazine and the, they're free ride skiers from like Washington. And they were just like blown away. First of all, by our groomers, which is crazy for people who spend their life doing powder, but they were also just like, there's nobody here. And, you know, as professional skiers, you see a lot of different resorts and it was fun to like have their perspective on this as well about the oh, fact yeah. that that's yeah. something that's such a f selling feature here. We, yesterday we couldn't believe it. We were going up and down from like base to, to some, like what, I guess top of the world, you guys yeah. call it. We would like the lifts had no line. It's a, it's a Friday. I get it. Today was a little bit busier, but still the longest we waited was probably the first lift of the day. We tried to get up for the first, like yeah. first runs. Um, and we waited maybe five, ten minutes. Yeah. Once we got to line, like five, ten minutes, ten minutes we were through. Yeah. But yesterday, nobody. And a lot of the runs too. We were like, we'd look around, like, man, we should be careful. Like, thank God we had Jenny with us. If we like some of them, if we went down and we didn't look around, like, we there was no not a soul near us. Yeah. Um, which is cool, but in some parts of it, like we like going to the glades and stuff like that. It's like you got to be careful here. You fall under a tree wall, like no one's gonna find us here. <laughs> but it's uh, it's cool. Like having a mount, it, you feel like you have the mountain mm -hmm. to yourself, which. Which is very like, it's really cool because you go to some of the bigger mountains or the more mainstream. I don't know if that's the right word, mainstream, but just like some well-known ones in Canada, packed. I mean, in the U.S. too. I, so right now I live in uh, Berkeley, California. I do the three-hour day trip <laughs> yeah. out to uh, the Palisades, and the average is like a twenty to thirty-minute lineup. And when you come back here, it's just so easy to just cruise right up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I've had that experience over and over again at other places. I'm like, man. Oh, this line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it yeah, it's really uh, it was a really cool experience, and right. I, I think obviously the fog obviously added to the fact that today because you couldn't see it. I mean, if, even you could be, you could have people around you, you couldn't see anything. It was I've never, I don't think I've ever skied through fog like this. I don't ever, never. It was uh, flat lights. Like it's a pretty interesting feeling of weightlessness almost. So even when you're on the ground, you're like, are my feet actually touching? I'm not quite sure. You really kind of do feel like you're floating, yeah. which is. Pretty wild, but especially I, when you're going fast, right? Yeah. Like you're just like, am I gonna hit something? Like we didn't, we don't know where we're going. You probably like know this place again, still like the back of your hand, but we're going, and there's a time where you hit a an area of like fresh powder that's not groomed. Your ski sinks into, and you're like, oh, like you take a deep breath, like oh, am I gonna fall? Like oh, okay, pay attention. I see it without my goggles, like majority of the time. Just come like I need all 100 percent of my vision because or else <laughs> I might die. Like I'm just. And yeah. we're not that good of skiers. Like we're, but what I would say is type two, type three, level two. Yeah, level Rick, three. Rick told everyone, Rick, Rick filled out the form today to rent his skis. He's a type three advanced. I was like, this guy's, this guy's salting it up a little bit. I don't know if he's going to type three, <laughs> see him in the glades. They're going to tumble out of the, coming <laughs> out of the glades. I don't think anyone thought he was a type three today. <laughs> no, man. People who saw that definitely did not. They, they knew what I was. <laughs> oh my but God. Yeah. One Dude. thing I noticed about uh, some peaks is like, everybody's so nice. I think we were in line to get food today. And I, was, I look over at George. I was like, oh, I wonder where the ketchup and the mustard is. Some guy comes over and says, like, oh, ketchup and mustard right, right by the front, front desk. I was like, or the cashier. I was like, thanks, man. I appreciate that. And he's just like walking back. It was the same guy when we went up to go co co coffee earlier at the top at the restaurant up there. He came up to us and he, he's like, just like oh, we're list. looking for coffee. And then Rick was like, oh, I don't want to have Americano. And he's like, I think he like overheard. And he's like, oh, you want espresso? You want two doubles? Okay, I want it. Like, what the, this guy's like everywhere. Like, just, just like the nicest guy. The best service. The, like the best service. And I'm just like, where did he come from? Yeah. Even when we're on the chairlift too though, because again, Very it's such a people. community here. We're on the chairlift. So beside these two gentlemen. And they're just chatting. We're chatting. And then we, we all start joining in conversation. He's telling us about the story about the, uh, the, blind, the blind guy and his dad and uh, the spotter. And just like we're, we're chatting and we're saying, well, you know, I would love an espresso right now. He's like, oh, go up to the... The place at the top of the mountain here, they got great espressos. They got Americano, Spanish Spe coffee, everything. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, thanks. Like, There's some, I would say uh, Sun Peaks has, well, first of all, the most supportive community. Like, yeah. as an athlete here, I wouldn't have been able to go even a quarter of as far as I did financially. Um, because like everybody here was just like, oh, you have this dream? Sure, we'll support you here. We'll do this fundraiser for you, et cetera. Come on. So like 
the reason I was able to go to the Olympics was because of this community. It really? fully was because of this community. That's amazing. That is actually, that I feel like that very doesn't cool. happen very often anymore. Everyone's kind of just looking out for their own best interest. A lot of times it's like very rarely do people come together for the best interest of somebody else. That's not themselves, like not their own family, but in the, like, I guess small communities like this where you're one big family almost. Yeah. And the interesting thing though, like when you're talking about community of some peaks, it's not just the people who live here. It's also the people who visit. So we have some, you know, we have some, you know, a really diverse amount of, or amount might be the wrong term, but a diverse group of people who come and like, you'll have somebody who owns, uh, who owns and or buys and sells gold mines, who's going up the chair with somebody who's lived here for 20 years, you know, kind of living out of the back of a van and they're both just so stoked to be on the mountain on that day. And they have something in common to talk about, which I don't think happens very often in like a lot of other situations where you have people from such a diverse background, all so stoked about one thing. And, um, yeah, just like all a part of the same community at the same time, even if they don't live here permanently. Yeah. I want to ask, so obviously being part of this community, when you were growing up, did you know that, like, cause I, I'm assuming everybody's a fairly good skier, or fairly good snowboarder that grows up here because it's kind of what you do. Did you know from a young age that you were, I guess, like noticeably better or that you had like a, a chance of doing this or did it just kind of, you just kept staying with it and, um, a bit of the latter. So my parents, um, are both ski instructors. They, started me so you had I, a head start uh well yeah i, I guess so <laughs> um my brother is four years older and he started when he was like two years old and i just wouldn't take no for an answer and kind of like put myself in his boots sort of thing so um my parents were like okay i guess she's skiing now um they started us in racing because it was social uh it wasn't because they thought that we were good at it or anything along those lines um and there was always people in the race club who were better than me um and i just kind of was somebody who chased I just chased. Um, so I wouldn't say that it was that I had like s superior odds. Maybe I was, you know, they were stacked in my favor a little bit, but it was more just like I really tried hard. <laughs> I love it. Well, you have to, right? In, yeah. In order to compete on the biggest <laughs> stage in the world, you have to have that work ethic. And obviously you have the talent behind it because you can't just have one and not the other, right? You have to have both. To, Definitely. To to that level, Definitely. Right? You need to be a, a really hard worker um, to, to to, to make it which is I think it's a good thing it sets you up well for what's it like but like coming back after the Olympics coming back to a community like this where it's you know I think the population here in non peak seasons what 2,000 3,000 maybe is it less I think it might be less I think it's less I think it's like 1,200 yeah. yeah maybe I heard someone sorry I think I maybe heard someone say that yesterday 1,500 something yeah like Jenny that. said yeah. 1,500 non peak and then peak season like up to like a couple thousand maybe Anyways, what's it like coming back after that? I mean, it was an interesting experience because <laughs> I, so it's such a supportive community. Everybody watched the Olympics. Um, and my particular Olympic experience was uh, not the one that I had hoped to have. Um, I ended up straddling a gate. If people don't know what that means, it's basically in ski racing. Both your skis have to go on the outside of the gate. And I think I was inside of it by about an inch and was disqualified because of that. So that wasn't the experience that I was looking for. So coming back, it was kind of interesting because there was like no escaping. <laughs> Everybody knew what had happened. Yeah. Um, and obviously we're, you know, they had, everybody had their own emotional attachment to my performance, even though it's, um, your performance. it's my performance. So I almost felt uh, badly coming back and be like, I'm so sorry. I let you guys down. But at the same time, everybody was just like, you know, just so excited that I'd had the opportunity to represent Sun Peaks and, and also very, um, you know, still supportive of me and no matter what I do. So yeah. maybe not no matter what, but has continued to support me, which is great. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cause it's, it's tough when I, and I get completely what you're saying where it's like, everybody's watching and you're there, but at the same time, it's like, you're doing something that a very small percentage of the world gets to do compete on the biggest and you obviously don't know it's George knows like I love Olympians I think Olympians are the coolest people I was going to say that there if you didn't tell them yeah, I, <laughs> Riggy tells, I, Riggy tells George I, I don't get starstruck by like you know like like singers and, and yes you do not really singers I like singers but it's not oh. like, like Olymp Olympians are my thing because oh, yeah, again yeah. you are it, musicians you can get famous let's say you have a song on TikTok that goes viral boom you're a famous musician now or if you have the look or if you have that I specific yeah. sound, right? Like it's, it's a lot more luck goes into being a, a famous musician. Again, a lot of them have talent, but think about how many talented musicians never make it a lot. If you are talented in your sport, you are going to make it like there's Ooh. the, the luck factor I think doesn't play into it as much. 
That's why. So I've always thought Olympians are the coolest. Like I have every Olympic jacket. I like I have Team Canada. Everything you, got, you could think. The little lemon stuff is pretty. I sick. have it. I have it. He, <laughs> I have. I have it all. Like the hat, scarf, bucket hat. Yeah. I'm ready to go to the Olympics tomorrow. <laughs> um, so I've always thought it was the coolest because again, you are the country's best or the world's best athlete in your particular thing. So even though again you didn't have the results you wanted, you still got to compete on the biggest stage in the world. Yeah, I would. Um, I'll add to that a little bit and I would say that there is a little bit of luck as far as timing goes. So yes, the people who are the best in the world, like, um, you know, they have a really good shot of going to the Olympics, but injuries still happen. Um, timing of results, like the Olympics were my first race back realistically after having a concussion. And I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to go because it was my fourth concussion. I was like having some, you know, kind of symptoms that weren't going away. Um, so there's definitely some like luck and timing that goes into it as far as, when you perform and who gets to go based on their performances and like making sure that you're performing in the right races. Um, I think that there's a bit to that. And I mean, I know that there was probably when I went, I felt so, I felt really lucky to go in the fact that there was a group, a really strong group of skiers and on any day, anybody's performance could have put them in the Olympics. Um, and, on, and I mean, for me, I was lucky enough that I had the results, but there was a lot of other girls who, um, were Could have been there, but yeah. 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 So I would put that out there, but I think that it is like everybody who's competing there has worked their ass off to get there. Their whole lives. Yeah. Their whole lives. And, um, you know, put in a heck of a lot of effort, whether they got there themselves or not. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. It's, I never actually thought about, um, uh, I never thought about the, the timing. Yeah. The so on that, like you, when you said that, like there's people or other, you know, the ladies that were trying could have made it the day if, you know, if a little bounce went their way for the qualifying in that aspect, like that, let's call it that race that you qualify and you have to have, you know, maybe that you have to have everything kind of finely tuned that day and a, a bit of luck may also play a factor. Um, like what would you say separates kind of becoming that Olympian from like just making, is it like a, a hundredth of a, a second? Is it like, you know, a few seconds or is it, is it that close on the qualifying side of things too? Ooh. Um, so I, or is it like a few at the top and then it's like split there and then it kind of falls off. Um, a little bit of all of that. Okay. okay. <laughs> so races in, in, uh, Alpine skiing can be separated by hundredths of a second. You can be, I mean, there was one Olympics where I think, between first, there was like a three-way, I'm going to get this wrong. I think there was like a three-way tie for first place and then a fourth place who was like two hundredths of a second back. That's crazy. Craziness. Um, or I had a race where I was uh, 31st in the world by one hundredth of a second. And if I had been top 30, then, you know, you get a second run in World Cup, which means that you get the, you know, you get World Cup points and that gets a top 30 in World Cup helps you qualify yeah, for the yeah. Olympics. So it can be separated by hundredths of a second at the race level. And then there's also, you know, you have to have several results in order to qualify. So it's not just you competing against people at one race, it's over several races. So you'll have, um, you know, a couple people who are in the mix at each race and it can be, you can just perform at different times. So, uh, yeah, kind of a a little bit of everything. Uh, Um, I have one more question. I always mix them up for, for (laughs) skiing. It's there's Alpine and the, uh, it's, uh, is it freestyle? What's the, what are the two? Well, there's race, there, right. which is alpine skiing is the, all the racing disciplines. Yeah. yeah, and then there's terrain. Uh, oh, no, there's the, freestyle, which covers a whole bunch of different. But that's the, yeah, that was a term that I was trying to. Yeah. I was forgetting. Yeah. and that's then there's like, also Nordic, which is also technically skiing. But the Nordics, yeah, yeah. But, the, but the freestyle one is like the moguls with jumps or aerials. Tra- yeah, okay. Or uh, pipe. Got park. it. Okay, that's and that was the one I was trying to think of. The, I mean, we can probably look this up, but I actually wanted to ask: Do more? Do you think more people? Um, more people trying to qualify or I guess trying to pursue Olympic endeavors in skiing gravitate towards Alpine freestyle. Is it split or is it just like, I think it really depends on the mountain that you come from. Um, okay. so here growing Ooh. up, there wasn't a freestyle program. There is now. Okay. Um, but there was, there was a race program. So I ended up in the race program. I think a lot of the times, uh, it, it, it depends on what the kid likes to do when they're like, 10 or 11 years old because oh, yeah. a lot of the programs will do both if if they have both <clears throat> and then you can kind of specialize a little bit from there okay uh, yeah that makes uh, that doesn't make sense i never thought about that from the mountain perspective because you were saying earlier did you know this rick like we were talking while you were doing your stretches more <laughs> olympian <laughs> more olympics more olympics on the ski team come probably from the east coast ontario quebec yeah. than from out here really that's yeah. what i said 
when I was on the national team, I was the, for a lot of the time, I was like the only girl from BC. Really? Yeah. How hard? That's hard to Why believe. Why do you think that is? Um, I have my... But how is that even possible? I have my suppositions. My, uh, I believe, in my opinion, um, that basically when you're on the East Coast, you have uh, shorter hills. So you get more runs and gates or more runs on the mogul course than you do out here. So here, your courses can only be so long. And so you're actually doing a lot of skiing to the course and a lot of skiing from the course back to the lift. And if you are somebody who takes advantage of that, that's a huge plus. But a lot of kids will just straight line it. And so they're actually losing repetition, uh, focused repetition in comparison to the kids on the East Coast. It does make a lot of sense when you think about it. But I I never thought about it that way when she said like on the yeah, lock of Ontario Quebec Quebec I would have thought because there's Mount St. Anne well Trump I mean off. so then but there's like also Ontario would, it would have had a hard time making that but it they actually the but then even up sense. north up north like northern Ontario there are decent mountains right yeah I mean I spent a lot of time racing in Collingwood area and there's some I mean for racing it's really good quality I remember the first time I raced out there I was terrified because it was the first time I'd ever skied on ice. But what it does, like ice oh. is really good for, or really hard snow is really good for racing because it keeps it, the race really fair for longer. When everybody's doing like the same course top to bottom, what you end up with is every time somebody does the turn, they create a, a divot basically by the gate. So by the time 30 kids have gone down that course, you have a, a pretty big rut formed. Whereas in the East Coast, because it's so hard, it it stays smoother for a lot longer. And so you have better training conditions for a longer portion of the day, but you also in races have a lot fairer conditions for kids who are starting later. And um, yeah, being from BC, I'd like tune my skis twice per year, maybe up until that point. And then I got there and was like, oh my God, I have to relearn really? everything. <laughs> yeah. That's, see, I, that's actually, this is really cool. To hear, I, I would not have thought about it that way. But it like, it, it makes complete sense. And it, to your point, and you said it earlier, like, you probably have more people as a community and more people in like the call it in BC that ski than let's say maybe in, in Ontario because mountains everywhere. It just seems like it's part of the culture. But yeah, if you're trying out for something and you have a purpose, you're not doing moguls the length of, of sun peaks. I mean, it took us how long to get down, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I think that you can have some really good skiers. I mean, I think that British Columbia produces really great skiers, but they're skiers first, not, racers mm -hmm. first so they can ski the whole mountain um but they might not necessarily because they can do that they probably are more likely to go into big mountain skiing or into doing you know uh st stuff that's out back um yeah. not necessarily in resort too so i just think that there's a lot more um there's a lot more options with skiing mm -hmm. to do here uh than maybe on the east coast as well okay. yeah but it, it is interesting because like the ski culture out west is way different than ski culture yeah back East, I guess. What are we? What's Ontario? We call East, it back Central East, East, though. Yeah. I know everybody yeah, you know in the Maritimes I mean. would tell us that yeah. we're wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Maritimes is actually. But in Ontario, like, there's not really a ski culture. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, George. Is there? I mean, like, not, I would like say some, like, not really. But, I mean, I grew up, like, I was born in Mississauga, basically. My dad is a Greek immigrant, and he would take me on Saturdays up to, like, Horseshoe Valley, put us in the car, pack a sandwich, and, like, we'd go, which is really weird to think about because, like, my dad grew up in a small village with no snow in Greece. Yeah. Um, and I actually had a, he had a lot of buddies that did that, like, a lot of buddies who came from Greece, take their kids and ski. Um, I don't know if that answer, like, I don't know if there's, like, a, like a ski culture where, I like, because I would go once every two, every three, four weeks, let's call it. Yeah. But if you go to Collingwood, like, on a weekend, like, there's a lot of cottages up yeah. there. A lot of people go. You go out to, like... You know, the, the lifts are packed and, and then Rusty's after. Everyone's outside drinking. So I think there is a ski culture, but it, it has to do with if you you either engage with it or you don't. So people who are really, uh, you know, who love skiing are very passionate about skiing, particularly, I think, particularly about Quebec. They have yeah. a very strong ski culture. But I think if you were somebody from Ontario, you have that kind of culture of the, the two hour drive anyway, yeah. summer or winter. Like you think about people who go up to Muskoka or you know anywhere yeah you any, cottage any cottage in the country. summer yeah yeah you go to the cottage in the summer you go to collingwood to ski in the winter like a lot of people my mom is from ontario originally and that was that was her that's yeah what Routine, they did yeah. so yeah it's it's pretty like that is pretty pretty common i, I like i wonder what like I, I yeah i wonder as a whole like i, I would f guess that more people in bc as a whole like ski or do you know ski snowboard whatever some sort of outdoor activity especially in the winter um and the thing that I've noticed too, it, it, you know, when you go to call, um, to like call it Blue Mountain, nothing against it, um, 
but you know you'll you'll be there because I guess Toronto's such a multicultural city and it's you know um, it's such a big uh, such a big city. A lot of people that you know want to try for the first time and get into it. It's not far, right? It's not that hard. Two hours. It's not a daunting mountain. So anyone goes. But then you also see the people that go in like jeans, no hat, and an open jacket, bombing it down like the greens. And again, that's great. All po- all the power to them. The more people that get into it, I think the better. But you see more of that. Well, that like they look almost like they come ill prepared. I did not see anyone look ill prepared at this mountain. And if anything, I looked around like oh, people like I, we were the ill prepared yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> you know, people in like full colored like uh, jumpsuits and everything, and other people that look like they, you know, it just everyone looks. You, I looked at anybody here. Everyone on the mountain on the lifts look like a really good. Be- like let's call Looks it intermediate or better yeah for sure for sure <laughs> no, i th- think that people intent i think what you're like what you're describing is uh first has to do with population ba- base and i think first of all it's really really freaking important that there are people of multinational descent who are skiing otherwise this is a sport that's going to die sure. so i think that the fact that there are people in closer to the cities who are able to experience skiing for the first time my dad what his family was were dutch immigrants he grew up not skiing he was introduced to it through a school program and ended up loving it and becoming a ski instructor and like making his life out of it so i think it's like it's i think there's a dichotomy of yes everybody here looks like great skiers but that can almost be to the detriment in the fact that this is a sport that needs new blood and needs new people and can't just be you know families who've skied for generations yeah yeah see but that's the thing here i feel like it's very it's a welcoming community whereas back home it's not as welcoming like the skiing like here Everywhere I went, everyone's smiling. Everyone's having a good time. No one's rushing. Nobody's butting in line trying to get to the ski lift faster. Everyone's like, oh, are you two people? Oh, you guys want to join us? Yeah, sure. Come along. Like, everyone's having fun. Yeah, everyone's having <laughs> yeah. a good time. Everyone's fine. Back home, it's kind of like, oh, actually, I'm in front. Don't butt me. I'm going on this chairlift alone, even though it's three extra spots. The etiquette's ed- not like, Yeah, not I, I feel like it's... Maybe it's because it's a little it's, go go go. Maybe a little rush, kind of like I mean, that. Kind of like, like East Toronto. Coast Canada versus yeah. West yeah. Coast Canada. Yeah, maybe that's like, it. <laughs> even even yesterday, I, I tell you, Coast Midwest. Yeah. You guys call <laughs> yourselves Midwest or Mid East. <laughs> I uh, I actually uh, was to, Ricky and I were actually talking about the etiquette. We were going up the lift at some point. Remember, we were saying something about yeah. like you move slow to the left in the middle. I was snowboarding yesterday, so I, I don't I snowboard. Um, and yes, like I was I was fine yesterday. Was tired at a certain point. Um, and I think at one point, like I was like, my back leg was like really sore and I, I saw my, my binding coming out. So I stopped, um, not at the crest, like not at a plateau on a run, just a little down the plateau. And Ooh. I was probably, and I was probably near the, I was actually very near the middle of the run. And I know you're not supposed to stop in the middle of the run. And I wasn't paying attention. I just, I was long day. It was probably like two o'clock. I was burnt out. I was sitting there trying to buckle it up and I was like, catching my breath. And I, and I, 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 I guess a guy and a girl probably younger, kind of came down past me and they were skiing. And the girl, and it wasn't even rude. She like kind of came down. She's like, uh, she's like, hey, you should move to the side. Like, it was like kind of like said it as she was passing. And in my head, I'm like, she's absolutely right. I am in the wrong. I should. And that was like a really nice way to say it, right? But like, I, I feel like, you know, that same common courtesy is not extended as much if you're like, you know, if you're somewhere that's like, a, you know, the smaller mountains in the east that are more congested, people are a little bit more annoyed, a little more testy. Get that out of my way. Yeah, it's a little more of that, right? Runs in. People yeah. seem so so chill out here, so nice. and Everyone's yeah. smiling, all the staff. Like, everyone's just nice here. Like we, You guys w- are really selling this place, by the way. Well, it's great. This is our first ski trip. This is my first ski trip out west. And, like, literally, we're, we're maybe halfway through the day yesterday. We're like, okay, when, when's our next trip? Like, where, where can we go? Family day, long weekend. Where are we going? Okay, March. We're go- I'm going to Vegas in March. I'm going to be on the west side of the continent. Maybe we line something up before that. Like it's all we're thinking about now. Yeah. The I wanted to tell one more story because I just it just stuck in my head um, about how nice people are here. When we got when um because I, I skied today and I haven't skied since I was in probably 15 years. I haven't skied. Yeah. I grew up as a skier and then I changed when yep. I was in seventh grade. Um, as everybody so, our age did. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, me. I thought. Me. <laughs> I thought going out. I'm like, oh my god, it's gonna be so much easier. I can skate. Like, I, I'd be so easy to pick up. First round, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die out here. This is, this is nuts. But halfway through the day, maybe like 11 o'clock, Ricky and I went to the restaurant, had a coffee, then we're like, yeah, let's go back out. So we get our skis back on, and we're heading out towards Chief. Yep. And uh, in the backside there, and it's a black diamond. It's kind of glady. I'm like, I can probably do it. It's not that bad. But there's a guy, a gentleman, like, in a red jacket and older guy. So as we're, like, going next to him, I kind of start making small talk. And I'm like, oh, where does this way go? And he's like, oh, well, that way is this front and this front and that way is this front. 
And then we kind of kept creeping up. I said, the I'm like, well, what's this one? And I just kept asking. I was like a kid. I didn't realize like I could have, I was probably annoying the guy. And then like, we keep going and he's, he's peeling off to the right. I forget the name of the run back there, but it cuts right into the trees. It looks, that like, was a double block. It looks play, dicey. Yeah. And he's stopping on the edge of the, of the drop in. And I guess the, the, the guy he's with is buckling his snowboard. And as it diverges, I was like, hey, what's that one? Like, the one he's going to go down. And he looks at me, he's like, he's like what are you, where are you trying to go? Let me, t- let me help you. He's like, just tell me what you want to do right now. <laughs> so he turns his skis to face me, and we are probably 20 yards apart. And I'm a headphones. He's like, pause it. He's like kind of yelling towards me. And I was like, is Chief good? He's like, just go. Chief's great. You're going to have a good time. Bank around. Hit the cat track. Come back. I'm like, what lift do we take? He's like, He's like, what's it called? The Bur- 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 Burfield. 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 You think the Burfield? I was like, but not all the way down, right? Because it's a 30-minute lift. He said, like, you'll be at halfway. Go on, Chief. You'll have a great time. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right, see you later. Do you know what, George, you did a great job of telling that because it's almost exactly how it was. But he was so nice about it. I could kind of tell I was probably irritating him. But you I know, do you know when ch- someone's too nice that they don't want to tell you to F off so they keep helping you? But in the back of the mind, they're like, hey, can you leave me alone so I can... But the Dip best thing he did this, he was like, unless someone's watching the camera, they can't see. He was facing the, like, there was two trees here. He's about to go down. He keeps talking to me and he's like, <sighs> just, dude, and he was explaining. And I was like, I'm just, I just ruined this guy's day, but what a nice guy. And those are the kind of people you get at some peaks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my dad fits right into that category. If you ask my dad, like, he's like an encyclopedic knowledge about how many feet this mountain is like in elevation or oh, I love that. all that sort of thing he is the guy to go to like he would be so happy if you had run into him he would he would have talked i wonder to if it was hey, it's an older guy he doesn't have a beard does he no. red, all red he was all, all red, red no, suit no, black no, beard. uh yeah. some other great guy yeah he's a nice guy you said your parents moved here how old were they they were uh i think they were 28 when they moved here so they've been here for a, a, like a, then from that point on they've been here yeah 30 why, years and then why here um, so they, uh, they met ski instructing. They, uh, nice. when they were 18 at Grouse Mountain and, uh, they wanted to move out of Vancouver and I, they had almost, uh, bought a place up at Sun or not Sun Peaks. That's here. Uh, at, at Whistler. And they were just like, man, like we've gone to these other places. Like, let's go check Sun Peaks out one more time. And it wasn't Sun Peaks at the time. It was Todd Mountain. Um, we heard about this story. We know this. Yeah. Yeah. So they came up the... Uh, they came up the road and there was a uh, 20 acres for sale and they hiked up it. I don't know who actually like, you know, trespasses onto a empty 20 acre lot in these days, but my parents did and they like saw the view from up there and we're like, yeah, yeah, this we're here. This is this. That's cool. So they've been here ever since. Wow. And I, I'm guessing they like have put tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of hours on this mountain. Absolutely. They're both ski instructors um, and have been ski instructors since, uh, we moved here at Sun Peaks. So, I mean, my wow. dad gets like 120 days in a year. So he's uh, legit. Times 30 something years. Times 30 something years. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. At what point or how old were you when you start? Sorry, let me rephrase this. Are you, you're, I'm guessing better than your, your parents now. Like, yeah. Fair to say, yeah. Yeah. Like, but at what point did that, did that, Ooh. did that transition happen? Were you, were they finally, you know, like, oh, wow, she's, it. yeah, I, uh, she's better than us now. I, and the same thing with the, with your brother as well. Ooh, ooh, getting into the, <laughs> like, tough questions here. Um, okay. I, mom, I, dad, this is where you stop listening. Yeah, mom and dad, please don't listen anymore. <laughs> or you, Justin. Um, I think probably around 14 to 16 is probably, oh, wow. like, when I made British Columbia team, uh, then it was kind of like, okay, she's, she's, uh, she's good. Um, with my brother, it was, I think it's one of those things that's like unseated territory. <laughs> and my brother's a really good skier, but like he raced until he was 13 or 14 and then he coached and like did some other things. But I think, you know, if you talk to anybody at the mountain, they'd say that my brother was like a pretty freaking fantastic skier. So, I mean, I think that I get him in some things, but he can kick my ass when it comes yeah. to the park or anything along those lines. So okay. yeah. Is your brother still here? Um, he was in Vancouver for a while, but he just moved back. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's always the interesting thing. Like when the transition happens, because like, you know, growing up in a family that is like, is obviously, you know, passionate and, and like does this for a, like a living, I guess, or, or I yeah. guess, you know, I'll be living, whatever. Um, it's always cool. Cause like, were you guys like, was it a rival? Was it, you guys ever like have the little bit of like rivalries going up? Like, was it a, were you guys super competitive with each other? Or was it more just for the love of it? You guys enjoyed it. It was like, um, 
I, I'm going to say that we did it for the enjoyment, but my brother was, and it continues to be, uh, a very competitive person, but also an incredibly supportive person. And we're four years apart. So he was always just that little bit better than me the whole time. And so his whole thing was like, Oh, Ellie, like, let's go do this thing. I'm going to push you so hard. Like, let's straight line this thing. Let's go off this jump. Let's. So I was always chasing him. So he was, it wasn't necessarily direct competition, but it was always like, I got to keep up. Yeah. It was like kind of like pushing, like more like, yeah, not that like, not I'm better than you. You're you're never going to be better. It's like, it's like, you like you should keep up like let's keep going and yeah, keep yeah, kind of driving yeah. forward that's cool. i think like a really good example my brother used to race bmx um and he raced downhill mountain biking he was a pro downhill mountain biker and also was a motocross and so you guys I, are just athletic family here uh yeah yeah i would say so <laughs> gotcha. um but like his whole thing was like whatever he did he wanted me to learn and a, like a prime example of my brother pushing me is like he decided that i needed to learn how to gap on a bmx bike and I think I was probably 10 or 11, maybe a little bit older than that. And he would like, I, I, I did this little like gap jump and I was like, whoa, okay, Justin, like that was a little bit different. Like I'm not a BMX racer. Like that, that was good for me. He's like, just try it one more time. I'm just going to, I'm just going to tweak the jump just a little bit. Okay. You're going to have to go I, I, like push way harder into it this time. I want to see you get more air, but like, it's totally fine. And he'd moved it. So it was like six feet apart and I cleared it, but I almost cased it. And I, it was like a perfect example of him being like, but you already did it. You can do it again. Like not, a, not, not hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Really pushing your limits. Yeah. 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 Do, do you know what I think it is? A lot of times with the younger sibling, it's you want to keep up and you want to chase, but there's also that part where it's like, you want to, you want your older sibling to, to know that like you're trying harder and like you want to compete with them and you like, you look up to them. Like even with my brother, not like in sports so much, but there was always so many times I'm like, I'm trying to compete with you just so you know that like I look up to you, right? Like yeah. I'm trying to be as good as you are in this, right? Yeah. So I think there's – because a lot of athletes and like professionals, a lot of the times is they're the younger sibling because they end up just keeping up with their older siblings. Like Penny Alexiak, I think two of her older brothers, like one was uh, – one's a hockey player in the NHL and the other one does something else. Maybe she only had one older brother. But she would say like she was always trying to compete with him. And, yeah. You know, he's a guy – four years or three years older. So that's how she became so good because she was always just trying to be better. Yeah. Mm. I think about, I had a a teammate who um, I feel like is a really good example of that. Her name was Georgia Simmerling. And uh, she, she, she's an, the most incredible athlete. She is just, I mean, she won a Olympic bronze medal in track cycling before that. She went to the Olympics uh, in 2010 for alpine skiing in dual athlete downhill. And then she also went to the Olympics as a ski cross athlete in 2014 so she's like a triple threat and then has now started like a i believe she started like a agency uh representing athletes um and but she grew up with three older brothers who all were like nfl player type guys and when i think of her i can't think of anything but that like she has this great story of her being i think she was they made her play goalie and like all three of them like you know, shooting pucks at her in net where she's just like little, little girl covered in pillows sort of thing. So it, that feels like such a prime example also yeah. of like the younger sibling. Who <laughs> and then kills obviously it. like it worked out for her, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's killing yeah. it. She's still crushing it. That's amazing. Yeah. The, the, the sibling rivalries are good. Me and my siblings, we, we definitely have our, have our, have our rivalries going a little bit different domains. Yeah. Um, everybody does though. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. My brother and I both, we broke each other's arms within two weeks of each other when we were younger too so i mean the, no the rivalry was sorry so you can't just say we broke each other's arms and not tell the story well it he, <laughs> oh, we had this aunt who like gave us do you remember sock and boppers yeah, yeah, of course. yeah uh so we got sock and boppers and my brother went to like punch me in the forehead and it uh it popped on my forehead and he shattered his wrist and then two no. weeks later we were like at uh, a younger cousin's um birthday Wait, how was party. your head my head was fine okay <laughs> shattered his my hand. mom had like we had like friends over or like my, my parents had friends over and they're like you can't play on those inside like you gotta go outside if you're gonna play with those stupid things and so i went inside my head was fine but he yeah he shattered his wrist um and then like two weeks later we were at the same person who gave us the sock and boppers her kid's birthday party and i we were like in a ball pit and justin just like fell backwards like dramatically you know to like create a reaction for the littler kids and i put my arm up and he, he broke my wrist no way. <laughs> so my parents were like oh god like social services is gonna call <laughs> it didn't happen that's, but that's so yeah, funny my sister though. kicked my teeth out when we were kids Ooh. backs we were like wrestling and had like a loose or one of my teeth my first tooth i think i lost she kicked it out 
we were like pretending to wrestle me, her, my brother, and then yeah, she kicked me in the face. <laughs> she was so proud of it for so long. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's a good thing. But anyways, um, siblings. Yeah. Um, where do you go from there? Yeah, I'm just, just thinking about. <laughs> I, the only thing I was thinking about was like while you guys were talking before, I could hear the kids behind us yelling like in the pool, and these little like terrors, whatever, and they're like they're clearly having a little party down there. Well, it's uh, a little hockey team. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a not a tournament. A tournament got canceled. I was in the. I was just telling you guys off air. I was in the hot tub last night. My whole lower body's just like in shambles right now. Both my knees are messed. I got bad knees. My mm-hmm. calves are sore. Like me and George had back to back football games Wednesday night before we got here, so legs are sore. I get in the hot tub. And I'm sitting there, it's me and like a few parents. And like ice balls slash snowballs are just like flying in the air. And I'm like, oh my God, what is happening right now? These little kids come sit down. And it's a circle hot tub, probably fits about 15, 12 to 15 people. So there's about six parents, me, and like 10 kids just jump in. And they don't, re- like, it's like they just didn't even realize that I was sitting in the hot tub. So they're splashing. There's three to one side, six on the They're fully talking over me like I'm not there either. And I'm just like, do I say something? Do I not say something? But it's probably the same kids just like throwing ice balls around. <laughs> they cut us off in the elevator. They're like peeping in our in the, in the room. These kids are out of control. But don't you remember being a kid like that too? Like I remember Kinda. when I was a kid, like at a hockey tournament, playing mini sticks in the hallway. Like did it? I yeah. play mini sticks now. <laughs> with in the hallway. My my fiance's uh, my fiance's family. They uh, sh- uh, some of her younger cousins. Uh, these three girls. They play hockey. Really really good athletes and. Uh, their house they, their basement is like they have like a net but they have like it's like a it's almost like a like a dream like basement for if you're like an athletic kid it's got like a bunch of carpet down like little mini stick nets and then an actual big net for shooting with like the little like uh little you know the fake Plastic ice pad, pad whatever yeah right and uh when i was a kid i was one of the older ones in my family of my like my i'm the oldest of my siblings but even one of the older ones of my cousins but there's a gap between my even older ones. So like we would we play s- sports a little bit. We had the kind of like cousin rivalry, kind of the sibling one. Um, I think I was the most or amongst the one of the top of most passionate sports, any sport really. I'd play like give me a stick, I'll play hockey. I was never really a hockey player, but I just wanted to play sports. Anyways, now uh, it wasn't very f- good. It was not very good. <laughs> I, I had a lot of heart. I made a lot of sports teams in high school because of my like I was a team guy. Not a ta- <laughs> not a talent guy. <laughs> Uh, baseball was my one sport that was actually pretty good. But uh, anyways, my uh, my fiance's cousins, we, we go over for like, you know, for Christmas or whatever these events. And the first time we went over, like a couple years ago, they had like one of the basements. See, so I have mini sticks. We started playing around. I just didn't met the family. So I didn't want to, you know, go all out and be intense. And they're all younger than me too. So I can't, you know. George's throw, out there dropping his shoulder to his little kids. Kid around. Kids learn it. But like now, every time we go up to their house, I'm like, guys, mini sticks, let's go. We get like a whole <laughs> game going. And it's like I'm reliving my childhood. We just like... So, like we were saying, when you were kids playing the tournaments, I'd do it now. Just not in public, but I still live for that stuff. I, I thought being Canadian would, like, automatically make me a good skier. For, or not good skier, good skater. I mean, I did, like, pond hockey and stuff growing up. And I was working, um, uh, basically, I was working at a construction management company in Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, the company that I was working for, um, they had ice time there's like usually they put like a rink in the center of fenway park in the in the winter um and we were doing some work on like the pesky pole and and some other stuff as the company and so we got ice time and they're like put out this company-wide email they're just like hey if anybody's interested like we've got some you know we've got some ice time at 7 30 a.m if you want to come play like pick up hockey feel free to come and i was like that sounds like a really cool experience i'm gonna go do that uh so i had like access to some skates I uh, got them sharpened. And I was like, okay, like I'm just going to just go out, wing it. I haven't been on skates for like 10 years, but this sounds like this is going to be a really good time. And I showed up at 7.30 a.m. and everybody else, all construction guys, have their hockey bags that stink and like are full gear and it's just me and like 20 guys. And I was like, uh-oh, I think I made a mistake. <laughs> and so <laughs> they're like in there getting all their, their pads on and stuff. And I was like, I'm just going to I'm just gonna go out a little bit early. <clears throat> And full on almost at a face plant as soon as I got on the ice. And I mean, I got it together in time for other people when they got there, but they were like, like slap shooting yeah, yeah, on yeah. net and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> I haven't been on skates in 10 years and I'm upright and I'm making it around this rink, but I'm obviously not playing with these guys. Uh, and so I had to concede that my Canadianisms uh, lacked in this yeah. location. 
that was a te- you don't just automatically get like to learn how to play hockey when you're yeah, Canadian. Yeah. I didn't grow up playing hockey. I learned from my, my buddies in high school. Um, a lot of them played like double A, triple A. So I'd go play like sh- pond hockey with them and I'd see what they do and just kind of mimic it. Yep. Um, it's so funny. I still, so Rick plays in a league on Fridays. So it's almost like the same thing, like a construction league. And he's like, you want to come out and play? There's like no refs. It's like, it's like beer it's league. league. It's a, it's, it's, um, pick organized pickup. Pick yeah. So I'm like, I haven't played hockey in a while. I played, I play that kind of soccer. Like I play that version of an organized sport for soccer on Saturdays. Yeah. I'm like, I can, I can use another sport in my life. I can go play hockey. Went to go find my hockey equipment. My parents I guess, threw it out. Like I haven't had it forever. So I'm like, oh, I guess I got to buy new equipment now. So I went and bought all brand new equipment. Everything showed up this thing. I'm like, I'm probably not gonna be too bad. I get on the ice, and <laughs> Rick's like, you're "Doing great, you're doing great." He's like, and after the end, in my head, I'm like, skating circles around guys. It was so bad. And uh, afterwards, like George, like, do you know how you skate? Like, you ever seen yourself skate? And I was like, he's like, you like you can skate. But, like, you have this weird technique. <laughs> and, like, I don't know if you want to explain, like... I saw... So, so I'm, I'm watching him, and there's every time it's like... Do you know when you're trying to get the engine going, you give it, like, a couple good strides? Like, even... Like, you're on a flat area when you're skiing, you're, you give a couple good pushes to, to get your yeah, momentum yeah. going. George just does it with one leg. So he pushes off, yeah, pushes like, off, and then gl- and then starts. And it's like... And I wanted to tell him mid-game, but I'm like, in his mind, he's doing great. And, you know, I'm happy for him because <laughs> he's not doing bad at all. But it's just the weirdest thing ever. So I'm like, hey, George, like, this is how you skate it. Yeah, like, heads up. This is what you... No, really? It's like, yeah, man. It's like, actually, I was like, every fucking time. Like, no, every I, I said it right away. I was like, oh, I, I, I didn't say no. I said, as soon as you said I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I can see that. Like, yeah. now, I, now I know what you mean. You're gonna, if you do that for too long, you're just going to be like uneven between your sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, balance, this, this, um, balancing out. You got to be careful with that stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. I, uh, but anyways, I've played a few weeks of hockey now with them, and I'm actually not, not terrible. Um, but well, I thought... Go ahead. Uh, no, I was gonna say skating and skiing are very similar, though. Yeah, there's definitely some similarities. Like even like you were picking up skiing today that you haven't skied in 15 years. The fact that you we've been skating the last couple of weeks definitely helps. I think the one thing that I find that's like really similar between the two is like you do that little. Um, and this isn't this isn't cool. Don't nobody who plays hockey is gonna say this is cool. I'm sure. But like you can do the like the like little wiggle where you like start from from stop and then you like try and like kind of pulse your edges until you like pick up speed on yeah, skates. Yeah, it's yeah, how goalies skate. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Sure, I'm sure they do. Um, <laughs> I was a goalie. Was okay. <laughs> but that, to me, that's like the same action that you do in skiing. It's like you're really actually pulsing your ski to uh, to create um, motion momentum. down the hill and momentum. So um, I, that's the part of, that I really enjoyed about hockey. <laughs> well, even, even just like carving, it's basically yeah. you're like almost yeah. stopping. Yeah. It's like the momentum of... Oh, I can get it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I really enjoy talking about the bending of skis, et cetera, and how they like create impulse and stuff but really it well it's it's all dynamics and yeah and i took that in school which was really fun and ended up doing some like uh side studies on my skis based on that which was really fun that's but, cool so like like the, like in terms of like transfer of motion energy well, or I like mean, the, the if you think the, about your ski think about your ski as like a trampoline the more you energy you put into your ski the more bounce you're going to get out of it so the way that a carving ski or a parabolic ski works is you're bending the actual material and when you're able to like release the ski at the end of the turn cleanly you're actually releasing that uh, potential energy that's being stored in the ski through the arc of the turn and when you're able to release that it actually springs the ski kind of forward um and that's how you create uh more pulse yeah, more yeah. momentum get so you're kind of leveraging not just your you're not just your like your weight your speed all that oh, stuff it's actually like it's yeah it's actually like Canadian, creating that energy that kind of propels yeah, yeah, you a little, yeah. little bit yeah that's but crazy. how do you do that do you like lean that's why i'm not jumping high off the jumps <laughs> i'm not i'm not getting a pulse <laughs> i was just saying but is that like you lean into like the center of the ski and that's how you, like you press down yeah almost, so like or? if you think about so <laughs> Um, so, and say this in like complete like beginner lang- lingo because so yeah, not you, level three lingo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> level two <laughs> I'm trying to well basically like when you skis you turn in arcs and so when you're at the center of the arc that's where you want your ski to be the most bent or like most pulsed okay, that makes sense yeah so th- when you're coming out of the turn that's you're able to like bring as much momentum out of the turn into the next one as possible um so that I would say like I think it's just think about like how you are you are in a trampoline you wouldn't pulse really hard like right when your feet touch the trampoline you'd wait till you hit like the bottom yeah and yeah. then you pulse out of it 
<clears throat> Makes sense. I'm going to yeah. try it tomorrow. Yeah, let's see it. I'm, I'm ready for it. No matter yeah. what, I'm going to tell everyone I was flying out there tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to do 10 runs. I'm going to be so slow. I'm, I know I was flying out there. He just saw me. To go back to that thing you said about skating, it is similar. Like, I, I mean, I was like the first run, I, like I went down. I, I was, inter- I'm definitely, I would, I, would, I, I would say I was like the first run or two, I was at like a, a top beginner, bottom level intermediate is what I would have been like. By the end, probably like intermediate. Just below intermediate. Yeah, I mean, you're similar. Schemes. Yeah, but it, it it gets it's interesting how you like perceive yourself when you go down because, like you know, I'm like I think I'm pretty self aware enough to know what it actually looks like. I know I'm not a pro, right? But in my head, when I'm going down, I am like flying through the glades, going 100 miles an hour, and then Rick's my video is like. That's what you look like, <laughs> and it's like pizza. Like going yeah, you're like oh my glades. god, that was so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's well, kind of I mean, like it's kind of like Ricky's reel. The yeah. one where you, that's what you think you're gonna do. <laughs> well, that looks nothing. When like When we it. were on a ski trip a few years back, we were in the glades, and I was like, oh, like we found this little like jump bear. So George went down. I was like, well, take my phone next time. Get a video of me. I kid you not. I'm like, I at least got two feet. Three I did feet a burst. Of I did a burst of yeah. shots. I'm like, <laughs> I've got at least three feet, minimum two feet air. I'm like, I at least came like, yay high, right? He looks, he shows me the footage or like the, the pictures. And George got like a low angle too. So you know it's like, <laughs> he got we're not lying. It. He got all of it. I think I got maybe like eight inches. <laughs> yeah. And like you're like max. hunched a bit. So it looks like, like you're going off fast, but like not really. Just, <laughs> no, even the video, I got, I got one of him today slow mo by accident. I almost, and, that's that's after the guy we talked in the red going down chief. Yeah. Oh, I almost died down chief. Yeah. <laughs> that, if, you, hey, if, you're, if you're high beginner, low intermediate, Unless you're level three, don't go down chief. Yeah, that the, the black dicey. glades are tough. That was dicey. The black glades here are tough. They're, yeah. I mean, I really like them. They're, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's, you're also there's top level. You're also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Olympic but athlete. The nice a little different. Is, <laughs> <laughs> like, you nice know, the experts is, only, the experts <laughs> only route. Yeah, you can go down that one. I'll send you guys down the other route. Yeah. Um, but no, there's like a good selection. You can go from like having black tree runs here to yeah. to blue. Uh, yeah. There's there was no point where actually no, there was only one point. We're, we're, we're stuck in this like treat area. We're like, we need to get the fuck out of here now because like this is too good for us. Like this is too hard for us. All the other ones, you can kind of pop out to the side either way and like you're in an open area where you, you can kind of carve your way down. That one treat area on the back side. Yeah, it was Chief. Was it Chief? Or that was, was the one yeah. where at one point I was just sli- sliding down horizontally. I was like, yeah, no, I'm like, this is too tight, too steep. I, I don't see open area anywhere here. I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just going to, George, I'll follow you. <laughs> uh I, I don't know why today when I when I in my uh, the reason I tried the skis um, I obviously I haven't done it in a while but I thought you know what would be a good opportunity I haven't done it in a while let me let me try it out um, and my thought was that skis would be easier in the glades and we both like just going through the trees stuff like yeah. that taking our time down so I'm like skis would be easier because you're always kind of pointed down you can just kind of kick your heels out to slow down whereas a snowboard you got to get enough to get heel side toe side and it's yeah. hard so I would kind of like. You do the like banana turns. Yeah, because down. especially if you're in the, I guess in the in the mountain here, if you're below, um, called the lower half. Yep. A lot of the glaciers there get ran a lot more, so they're they're kind of banked. Yep. So it's really like you get a lot of speed. It's really hard. So oh, on a yeah. snowboard, I found it a little bit harder. So I'm like, today will be good, and I and I did find that, but we spent more time on the upper part of the mountain today, and don't get me wrong, I actually really enjoyed being on skis, but then I also thought that hmm. With this a little bit, it's a little spaced out more. I actually would have, like, a snowboard would have been fine up here. And, like, the back one with Chief, it was, at one point, it's, like, very, it, like, kind of narrows a little bit, comes down. But it's pretty flat. It's not very groovy. And going on skis, it's hard because you kind of, as it pipes in, there was, like, a split of two trees. And I'm like, oh, I got to hit that gap. I cannot, like, veer off or I'm hitting that tree. On a snowboard, it would have been easy because I just could have, like, carved down and popped through. I'm going down the skis. I try to pivot. And I kind of panicked. And it, rather than like go through and just fly through and whatever happens, I kind of like just dropped myself and I almost fell into a tree well. And I was like, damn. I you really- have the classic uh, paradox of choice problem going on. You're like, oh, it could have been better with the other one. I'm yeah, yeah. So sure. <laughs> Barry Schwartz would be so. Yeah, I was thinking about that <laughs> a lot. That. I was thinking about that a lot today, but I actually really enjoyed skiing today. It was a, it was a lot of fun. My legs are destroyed though. Because yesterday, first day snowboarding, and we decided to spend you know six hours out on you know one of the biggest mountains. Um, my right leg, my right quad was toast after my back leg, my snowboard. So I'm like, oh, skiing will be easier. Bat, like using two legs now, it was harder because you have to use both legs. So both my legs are destroyed today. <laughs> my calves are shot. Like we've There's, been icing our legs every day. 
it's i mean skiing is actually really it can get you pretty good particularly if you do like a full day a couple days in a row it's pretty full body i think yeah. like I, I wear an apple watch and when i go skiing i like crush crush over because yeah. you're just doing it for so long well george what'd you hit today we we left we ha- i put mine on and I just put there was no I couldn't find the skiing one I put it snow sports and it's like the equivalent of call it a brisk walk whatever yeah. I burned twenty six hundred calories today yeah over five and a half hours almost six hours I think yeah because we paused for the first time we did coffee and then we paused for lunch so we we almost spent almost spent eight hours in the mountain today yeah there was a day which is crazy That's I, I think so I had much something similar the a couple of weeks ago or not a couple of weeks ago like last week we, we got like 40 centimeters of snow and you can hike out to gills um and it's only like a five minute hike and you'll get some really great powder because the, wa- the water <laughs> the snow just blows into that section and so okay. it was so good that i was like my friend and i were just lapping it and so we did six runs of hiking to ski and so you're just we were just Crushing just crushing it. the calories out there. Yeah, I got home and I was like, "Oh my god, what have I done?" That's the best thing. Like your your sleeps are so after good. a good ski day, because like we're also jet lag too, because we're three yeah. hours behind. Yeah. So like first night we got here, we didn't go to bed till like three o'clock, our, three a.m. our time, which yeah. is like midnight here. Yeah. So George was up at probably I don't know six a.m. here to, here time, which is nine p.m. back home, which is kind of late for us. But he was up early. I stayed in a little bit. I slept in a little bit more. But like last night, I think as soon as we turned the lights off, I was out cold. Just my body was like, yeah. No. I think the best, my favorite, my uh, top peak day for me would be like to ski all day, go to a hot tub, go get a, like do a spin or something like that first on a bike and then go into the hot tub, just kind of like chill out mm-hmm. and like spend, you know, go to one of the bars here. <laughs> I was going to day bit. yesterday. <laughs> I was literally my day yesterday minus the spin. Yeah. yeah. Skied all day, went to the hot tub. Bottoms stretch, I mean, we did how stretch, like, stretch, 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 right? We did bottoms yesterday. And bottoms is, it's exactly what I pictured would be at the bottom of this mountain. So bottoms is well. First of all, yes, it's exactly what you picture should be at the bottom of a ski yeah. hill in the spring on the last day. And I don't know if this is still going on, but the whole time that I was growing up, we have a Chinese downhill, which is a terrible term, but it's what it was called. Um, but basically, sorry, what is that? You have a whole host of people who are starting a race at the same time, starting from the top of the world and racing from the top. You have to jump. You don't even start in your skis. You start, you have to run to your skis, get into your skis and race from the top of the mountain all the way to the bottom. And you have to get out of your skis at the bottom and run up the stairs to the the patio and ring a bell at bottoms. And so when you rung the bell, you get your, your beer and, and you know, burger ticket. But it was like a really crazy. It's like four and a half minutes of, of, tucking. Still do it. It's called, um, the top to bottoms, bottoms yeah. top to bottoms race. And I, I was, I think, the first woman to win it. And we have this great photo actually, because I was like 18 at the time. I had like really fast speed skis, and there's a whole bunch of like locals here who, you know, they've been racing for years. They're like these big, big guys. And there's this great photo of me at 18 being followed by like four huge like downhiller type dudes like right on my tail uh, on. doing the race. But it was really, it's a really fun time. And it's also, it's at the end of the day on the last day. So the, they've like cleared the mountain. There's nobody here or, you know, there's nobody that you can run into. It's kind of dangerous. I and mean, it's, sorry, it's four minutes you said? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's but you're just bomb. Okay, is like, there a route or do you pick your own route no, down? It's, it's down the five mile the whole way. So you have to, there is a run <laughs> that you have to do. Yeah, five miles. Um, that's crazy. That's crazy. And, that's a and, and it's a green, that's a green, green yeah, right? Yeah. Green. And you just bomb the whole way. You bomb and like your legs are so shot. By the time you get to the bottom, first of all, you're like going through like water puddles. You're like, it's the last day sort of conditions and by the time you get to the bottom you can't even really get out of your skis because your legs are so full of lactic acid and so there's these like fant- i mean kind of fantastic crashes that happen near the bottom or like even people just they can't they're so tired they can't even get themselves out of their skis and so you'll have people like who will get there uh, you know 30 seconds before somebody else can't get out of their skis and suddenly they're racing each other up the stairs like full <laughs> elbows to like try and like That'd get the That'd be so bell. cool to see. It is a I would really, love to be around like a locals really night too though. It's fun. Like Tuesday locals night. Yeah, I, lo- I really like it out here. I definitely, I can, de- I, I for sure we'll be back out to, to Sun Peaks. I, I think it's like, just the atmosphere here is, is so cool. It's like, the, the, the village feels like the perfect size village. Like Bottoms feels like it kind of feels like a movie 
set. Yeah. It's like cheers. It kind of feels cliche. Like, I don't want to say this, like, not in a bad way. It feels like what you think, like, what you say, what you think of when you picture a bar at the bottom of the mountain. But it's like, it's really cool. It's like, it's not kitschy. It's kind of like, it just fits, I don't know, it fits that what you think it's going to be. What I like is there's enough. There's enough up here that there's choice too. So you don't have to go to bottoms. You yeah. could go to Morrissey's. You could go to Masses. Like Masses lights up on a good night too. Um, there's 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 a different vibe that you can go to depending on what you want. Yeah. Um, there's places that have you know board games. That you could have a beer and have a board game as well, or like go out to a fancy dinner or have sushi or 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 or. And yeah, yeah. Actually, we've got a really good coffee scene here too. I don't know if you guys have been to Balacos. I will. He's will, a big coffee guy, though. You should go to Balacos. Okay. They are amazing. They, they It's a that... Polish family. They do their own bakery um, items. They also have like a wicked kielbasa sandwich. With oh. She makes her own mustard. Oh, big mustard guy. Then you're going to like... Favorite, it's my favorite condiment. <laughs> well, Buster you should is the go best. to Balacos. And then Vertical Cafe. Is it right outside? I think I... It's right outside the hotel here, right? No. Uh, it's uh, Sundance. Sundance Hotel. Bottom there. Okay. It's okay. the first one there. But there's like two I've there. Seen it. I feel Vertical like Juice is also like really good. Yeah. They do like organic sort of delicious foods too. So like it's just. Uh, I'll say the food here so far uh, that in our experience has been really good. We ate. Where was the. Um, Cahilti's the first day. Yep. And then What's, we ate in the mountain. Wait, what'd you call it? Cahilti's. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I got it wrong. But did you guys time. get. Uh, <laughs> did you guys get a sticky bun? What that is, is that? Oh. Ooh, so okay. At Cahilti's? No, no, no. So this, you can get it up at the, the, the cinnamon, Sunburst Lodge. Like the cinnamon bun. Yeah. They're okay, huge. I kept they're seeing signs on it. It's famous They're here, like, right? they're famous, but you got to get up early if you want to get one. Like, when we were there, it sold out. Yeah, they're sold no, out No, because like when we were there 10:30. earlier. When we were there the first time, time yeah. we sat down and they yelled, they rang a bell and said, the, the, the cinnamon buns are sold out for the day. And I'm like, that, that's a thing here? Oh, I'm it's up. a... Yeah. Well, you gotta share them though. When They're I huge. got up, he was in the bathroom or something. I got up, I saw him. I'm like, "Ooh, those cinnamon buns look good." But like, I we don't eat. Well, we both intermittent fast. And I was like, "Oh God, maybe I'll get one at lunchtime." I mm-hmm. didn't realize it was a thing. But then, as you're walking out, you're like, "Famous buns made on site, usually gone by lunch or something." So <laughs> last week, I tried to. I was showing this film crew around, and I was like trying to show them these sticky buns, and it was like a quest. It was like trying to find the, you know, I don't know. Peach's so, Castle or something. Yeah. It was so hard. <laughs> we went several days in a row and they were like, ooh, sold out. You're going to have to come earlier. And so every day we really? went. Really? And uh, yeah, they are. They're really good. They're worth okay. it. Okay. If you can get them. Well, you can, you can go do it oh, tomorrow. tomorrow. So tomorrow I my plan done. is, and I was actually just going to ask you, like, what's one run I have to do? But tomorrow my plan is I want to do sunrise and sunset. Yep. I want to do both those. So like maybe I'll take a break during the day. But I want to be one of the first one up and then one of the last people down. Because I, I heard the backside. At the end of the day, is really nice because like that's where the sun sets or something. Yep. I yep. read that on. Somewhere. Um, so if I was going to do a day at Sun Peaks, I would hit the Sun Dance Law or Sun Dance uh, chair at eight thirty. It opens up before everyone else. Do a couple laps until nine. I would even maybe take uh, the elevation chair, which is like starts at the mid mountain, but it opens at nine. But if you get there, you can actually get to the top faster than anybody who does the sun that burst. Was that random one we did. Yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you take that up. You can get up before anybody else to the top of the mountain. Um, you can spend some time up there. Then I would probably traverse uh, back to Sundance from the Sundance. So you can ski. F- there's three mountains here, and you can ski between all of them. So if you do it in – a lot of people on a powder day will go up Sundance, actually take uh, one of the uh, trails that will take you over to Morrissey, do Morrissey, then take back in time, which is a, a uh, run that'll take you down to the Burr Field, then go up Burr Field, and then traverse back, basically. you know, uh, So you can do the whole... You're you like a loop almost. A loop yeah, all yeah. the way around the mountain. That's Gets really you away cool. from people even faster, yeah. even though there aren't that many. <laughs> uh, Morrissey yesterday, we only did two runs on Morrissey. It was like, we were like the only people there, I think. Yeah. Like, it was like empty. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's, it, it, when you look from this side across, one of the weird things here is that so the trees are massive. How do you like, I was going to ask you earlier, how do you like the trees here? Uh, obviously very different from <clears throat> the trees in Ontario. So you go first. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> tall and like it's deceiving. But when we were riding the lift up, I know I kind of had They're also thought, deciduous versus, or sorry, they're coniferous versus deciduous. Well, I, always, I knew what that was when I was a kid and I cannot remember. I always remember learning that. But I don't know what the difference deciduous is. Deciduous are the ones that lose their leaves. Coniferous have a cone. I did not. Yeah, I would not. I could not. Evergreen. Have, I would evergreen. Not have that. Okay, good to know. Um, one of the things that I that I noticed today when we were going up, the, we were actually going up elevation, the the chair, and I'm looking around, and I said to Rick, the trees here with the snow on them 
looks like you're in the, in yeah, the Grinch. In the Grinch in <laughs> a Dr. Seuss book. They almost look like... Um, I don't know if comical is the right word. They look prop. They look. Like they props. look like props because a lot of them. If you watch, if I'm, I, had, I don't remember. I don't watch The Grinch this Christmas, and I always watch it every Christmas. They like the trees kind of like sag a bit. Yep. The tree. I I swear, Doctor Seuss came here, saw the trees, and he's like, "This is what the Grinch should have," <laughs> because they look. It looks like it. They like the that top, the top of the the tips of them like bend from the, the weight of the snow. Um, yeah, and it looks like almost like a painting or a picture. I think it's really cool. I really like them. Um, yeah, they're they're cool. Yeah. I once had a, a friend from Boston come out and tell me that the mountains here were were cliches because they're yeah. snowy at the top and they're green and you know uh, perfectly <laughs> perfectly yeah, shaped, yeah. perfectly shaped mountains. And he's like, they're so cliche. And but I just e- even some of them, like you're yeah. going through a glade and like we follow tracks. So that's the easiest way to yeah. go, like find a good spot. One that's not too. Ridden, but like, okay, I found these tracks. I'm going, I'm going. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Tree fell here. Tree fell. Okay, let's back it up. Because, like, again, there's just random parts where a tree just fell. You know, it's like yesterday or the day before. Yep. And like, the other great thing about the trees here, though, like, uh, a little bit different than trees falling, but like, we have a full, you know, really great mountain bike scene here in the summer. Like, it's excellent mountain bike, too. biking here. And Underneath so, what path? What tr- sunburst. Uh, yeah. So we have all these like bermed mountain bike trails that are now in the winter being taken over as you know really fun little tree roots and so you'll get in there and suddenly be like on this amazing bermed little roller coaster ride that you wouldn't have known was there unless you got into the trees and knew somebody who knew the mountain bike trails and so you, it's kind of an adventure every time you go in. Those ones are the tough ones. That's Ooh, the, but they're so much fun. Those are the they're tough so ones that I can't fun. do. My knees are just I look at them like I did them the first day because you know how some of them have like the double yep. lumps. I don't know how you're supposed to ski that because you, I'm like you double uh, it. You just go over, you, and then you go like dun dun dun. Yeah, but what if you're coming? No, in fa- no, no. Like, no. You you're saying you jump it, right? Yeah, you clear you just it. Like yeah, miss both the of them. second one. You yeah. miss the second one. You yeah. Jump see, it. yeah. The problem is I don't have enough speed. So or I just, you just I hit faster. the second one and absorb. So I hit, like yeah. I end up going off the first one. I don't. I like, I clear the gap, but I hit the second one, and it's just like my straight knee, my, to the knees. Ugh. That's all right. So I won't do them anymore. I'm only my, I'm only doing the glades when the trees are fully covered. If the trees aren't fully covered, I'm not going to the glades. I mean, that's a good thing because when trees aren't, I mean, the trees are more exposed when there's less coverage anyway. Yeah. So it's safer when there's better coverage anyway. Now, I, after today's, when I was done today, after like putting in eight hours, I thought, you know what? I'm kind of like, I'm good. Thank you. Know, I'm happy they only got a couple days here because I don't think I'd do another one. And now that I'm kind of just like relaxing, I was like, damn, I really wish I was going back out tomorrow. No, I'm texting Jenny tomorrow morning. Um, like, Jenny, I need, you want to, can, can and, I come skiing with you? Like, <laughs> I, I want the host again. I, uh, now, are you skiing tomorrow? Do you want do you want company? Sure. You want company on the hills? <laughs> Rich, sure. You, uh, not I, would you pay, I would pay to see, it's just this, like. Would you pay me? Uh, <laughs> I would, I just pay to see him try to keep up. I'd be like, That's I think, hard. I don't know what would happen first. You get frustrated or, or rip. Like just you know, d- die. die. Yeah, <laughs> I think maybe Rick would die. I have a pretty good sense of patience when it comes to uh, okay. Okay. waiting for people. Yeah, so then That's I would good. die. First. But you know what? The nice thing is about skiing is like you doesn't matter what like level you are. You can always have like a really good conversation on the chairlift. So you know, there's a lot of times where uh, I'll go out with friends who don't ski as well as I do, but that's, I'm not going out. You don't go out with the intention of being like, oh, they're going to be right beside me the whole way. Yeah. You just kind of go out and you're just like, okay, well, I'm going to do my thing and I will see you at this checkpoint. It drives my dad crazy that I do that. He's like, you're not skiing beside me. And I'm like, do my own thing, dad. I'll yeah. see you at the bottom. <laughs> as long as you have your checkpoints. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's what we did. We Our checkpoints are obviously a lot shorter than yours would be. Our but. checkpoints is like 10 feet ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear these trees. I'll see the ball. <laughs> I'm like, and then Rick goes, hey, Hey Rick, is it clear? Yeah. <laughs> no, this was bad. I got, I, and then I just loop around him down the run, and then he goes back in the glades. Like, good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bank left here. Good. Turn right. I'm like, okay, I'm coming. And it's literally like here to there. <laughs> no, there was one time I was like, George, how's this one look? He's like, it's pretty good. I'm like, okay, go. He's like, no, no, I'll follow you. I was like, All right, George, noted. <laughs> I never, I don't lead the way in. Oh, actually, I do on the snowboard. I did a little bit, but yeah, not, not with skis. I wasn't sure. I was like a little too hesitant. Go. Sometimes you can't see. You're like, yeah. oh, it looks good, but like, I, I can't see past these first set of trees. Like, I mean, see communication the- is key. I mean, if you're in the trees, short stopping points is like pretty great because then you're just can yeah, kind of pick a, your absolutely. route anyway. And yeah. also, you got to check in. Yeah, hundred percent. One of the things that I noticed here, which is good, is we didn't really find anywhere that there were. Even when we went into the glades and it was like a little tight. Um, there was nowhere that felt like a sudden drop. Like there was some spots you could see that it got really steep. Very few and far between. Um, and I was saying earlier, I've been like I've done Jackson before, and I went like my that was the first like big mountain I ever went to. I didn't 
Yeah. Besides the Tremblant. Like that's the first one I went to. Um, and I remember like looking it up. My brother-in-law is a big snowboarder. He's the one that like suggested it. My sister at the time was like just getting into snowboarding. So she was like fed to the wolves out there. Um, she's a great snowboarder now. Um, Shout out to your sister. Yeah, shout out to she is shout out to Jordan. She's a very good snowboarder. <laughs> um, but anyways, I remember like when we were going there, I I heard about it and it was cool, like a cool place. But then I was like Googling, it's like, yeah, one of the toughest skiing mountains. Yeah. I'm snowboarding. And where I was going with this was like here, you never really feel like you're gonna get caught off guard really by something in no. a dangerous way. Yeah. Whereas like somewhere like that, I remember going down this bowl at one point and like you just I, I only just caught a glimpse of the corner of my eye of this little sign saying cliff ahead. Yeah. And I was kind of going slow and I came around and like, I can, I'm like, wait, where's the, the rest of this go? Fortunately, you can bank out, but like, there's like, there's just cliff. Like there's, you're yeah. on a, like a yeah. mount that actually has these steep, sudden drops. Um, so you have to be very cautious when you're exploring. Whereas like, again, here you can kind of just go, you can it. explore and like, you know, you, again, being a you level, safe, yeah. call it yeah. level two, maybe level th- like two and a half, like two and a half. You feel comfortable going on honest two and a half, even I in think- a black diamond. Like it, it's a little steep. You gotta be careful and have your bearings. But, uh, yeah, like it felt safe, which is it, good. It's one of those, it's a, It's an interesting thing. I think growing up here, you know, this is a mountain you can rip from top to bottom and, and be really safe with it. And you can push yourself really hard and you can find little drops and stuff like that. But it's not something that will naturally present itself on the mountain. You kind of have to f- seek it out. Yeah. Um, and going from growing up here to some of the, some places that do have more uh, cliffs and stuff like that. Right now, I, I ski a lot in uh, the Palisades down mm-hmm. in uh, California. Uh, I live in Berkeley right now. Yeah. Um, so... I, I think that was like a real transition for me to, and, and for, for people who, anybody out east to places where there isn't a lot of drops, it's a really, uh, you have to be a lot more careful in general about your boundaries, particularly as somebody who's a good skier because you're just used to going off stuff. But yeah. there's been some, like, I ha- there was two people I knew who were on the U.S. ski team who went out of bounds like they usually did and um, in Solden and ended up getting caught in an avalanche and dying. So oh, it's no. just like one of those things where you're just like, you, you the you forget the consequences when you're at a mountain like this because it's so safe. Yeah. And when you go to a place like Jackson, there actually are some pretty good consequences to falling off a cliff. And it's kind of like, oh yeah, right, right, right. Okay, reevaluate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like it's, yeah, it's uh, got you got you got to keep your wits about you. But yeah, here, I mean, we felt you feel safe. Feel yeah. Like good. minus yeah. my one absolute. Like train you can wreck? still let's be real. Okay. you can wreck yourself at any mountain, yeah. but it just might not be falling off a cliff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. These ones, I really enjoyed it. Um, and by the end of the day, I, I wanted to give myself a shout out. I got some air at the last, the last day. I cut some air on the last <laughs> jump coming down. The last run, I got some air. You, got you know, I got a little bit of air. Got a little bit I got air. a little bit of air. Come on, few feet. Okay. Maybe a foot. Yeah. Two feet. <laughs> Less than a foot. Eight inches. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm kidding. You got a foot. We yeah. uh, yeah. Go, that, one of the things that I find cool about skiing versus snowboarding. Like, don't get me wrong, it's cool to see a snowboarder catch air off off a jump. But when you see a skier, um, even if it's a tiny little thing like popping out of like a glade, like jumping back into the thing, it always kind of, it, it has something like very like graceful looking about it when you come out with like your like skis together, almost like you float out, yep. right? And I was like, that can't be too hard. Like just like catch some speed, get some air. So slowly all day, like I was trying a like, little jump, little bit, and I wasn't getting much. Just like just a little clear. I said, like, by the end of the day, I'm gonna get get a little bit of air. And I remember the last run we called it a day. I think we were doing five mile. I think that was the one. We just like yeah, we, we were coming yeah, in and out, whipping down. And we were like banking in, coming around the trees. And then I saw a nice, like almost one that dips down a little bit on the side and then pops back up at a good amount. So I got this. And as I was going, Rick like was next to me and looks, and I I felt like I was like six feet in the air, but <laughs> probably like a foot, if that. And I cleared and I was like, wow, that's actually not bad. Good job, George. I was like, I did it. Yes. Yeah, I'm I, a pro skier now. Pat myself on the back. I can leave now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good way to end. When you go through, like, when you have a good run, it feels amazing. Or even like a good stretch. You're like, wow, like, you know, I, I felt really good there. I was carving nice, popping in and out of the like, glades. Like, and you're just continuously going. It feels great. That's why people at the bottom of the mountain are smiling so yeah. much. You wonder why everybody's so happy. It's because, woof, you get a couple turns like that and you're good for like a month. To be honest, even when I wiped out, I was like, I had the biggest smile on my face. Yeah. Because I went through the glades and I had a good run. and just, I caught, you know, a big bank of snow that kind of tossed me. But I got up and I looked around. I'm like, well, the nice still thing here. is, I didn't die. I'm the, like, All right. the snow here is so soft that you yeah. can crash without as much of a consequence in comparison to like when you crash on ice. Yeah. My thing was, I just kind of made you I did like, a little yeah, I went all the way down the yeah. hill. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> even tossed. then, like, yeah, I got up. Everyone's like, you, you good? I was like, fuck. Like, yeah, I don't know how I 
I'm not hurt. Like, this is great. Yeah, got, and then got, Georgia comes down like a couple minutes. Are you all right? I was like, yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. That was so funny. That's the thing about skiing is like, it's one of those things. I, I, we talk about this a lot in, in, in ski racing is basically you can have one good run and it'll keep you going for like a couple months. You're like, I just had that one run. I just need to chase that feeling a little I, bit more. I guess it's like the runner's high then. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like when you, Georgie's a big runner, but when you have like a good run, it, oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. Yeah. And I think the other crazy thing about skiing is I know people who are 90 years old and still skiing. Like it's one of those, it's one of those sports. And I know like I've retired from, from athletic athletics, from, from being an athlete, uh, professionally, but I love skiing, love it. And that's like a core to my being is like how much I am passionate about the sport. And it's something that I'm never going to have to give up. Like I'm, I'm going, I'm plan on like being the 95 year old grandma on the mountain, just kicking ass. Very cool. You know, skiing is probably like golf. It. You know, something you can play to, you can do till late in your career. It just depends how hard you want to go. Yeah, actually, I'm going to give a shout out to my mother on this. She just did a study that showed that people who ski up until uh, their senior years uh, actually have improved proprioception over people who do not ski. What? So if you're looking for to be somebody who's healthy as a senior and like not trip and fall, you better ski. I'm just putting that out there. Thanks, mom, for doing That's that That's actually research. a really cool study. Like, that's good that, to know. that is interesting. You yeah. just said trip and fall. I almost ate shit in the shower the other day, like bad. Yesterday, here, <laughs> I got in the shower, turned it on, I took a step, and I, do you know what? that foreshadowed my fall today? <laughs> like I literally got in, <laughs> I almost took everything down with me. Oh, I just, I fall, I'm like fuck. George is like, you all right? I was like, yeah, I fell in the shower. <laughs> Just embarrassing. Like in the, I was like, I was you reading. Did you like, and have like particularly soft feet or no. something? No, it sounded like someone fell in the shower. It sounded like somebody fell. I felt old. It was hilarious. <laughs> I felt bad. Like, you oh, need man, one of those, like, like, you got need anti-slip no, mat. No, because it, it's there. It was there. We just didn't set it up. I've never set it up. I've never needed to. I'm doing <laughs> 32. I've never slipped and tripped in a, in a, a, bait, a, in a shower. There's a first time for everything. So I tripped there, and I should have. That was my foreshadowing of today, because I caught. I kind of caught myself where I didn't like. Fully eat shit in the shower, like I was your like, proprioception off or what? Well, fuck, maybe you gotta ski more often, but you only ski once a year. You gotta go more often. Yeah, apparently, you gotta shower that more often shower, too, apparently. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> on that note, I, I yeah. Think, I think, thanks for joining us on. Sorry for the, the 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 craziness of. Uh, yeah, yeah logi the logistics. Yeah, when we don't record in the studio, this is what happens. Yeah. Hey, it all worked out. It, it, it did. did all work out. And the Ellie 2014 Mac yeah. is still running. So uh, apparently, yeah. We're we're good there. That was that was that was awesome. This has been uh, this has been very very fun. I'm obviously I'm I'm not here to motor ski, but hopefully we're back out at Sun Peaks and and you know when we're back out we'll let you know and you can we'll meet you at the top of the hill and then we'll meet you at the bottom of the hill in between. Well, yeah. you might get a few, you might get three four runs in by the time we get down, but I'll have fun anyway. Yeah, and I'll yeah. show you where all the coffee spots are when we uh, when we go. Amazing, oh yeah, we'll do a little amazing. coffee tour of Sun Peaks. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I yeah I'm I'm good. Uh, if people want to find out more about you, what you're doing, your career and everything, where can they go? How can they find you? Um, probably the best would be to in go to Instagram. It's just my my name. Just look Perfect. it up. Perfect. Well, we'll make sure we put it in the, in the, the description. And other than that, guys, thanks for listening. Our next episode, we'll talk about some peaks and our journey and our chat here and uh, kind of some of the highlights. But if you made it to the end, thank you for listening. And that's all. Signing off, pals. Cheers. See ya. Bye.